So HP has been making some of my favorite business laptops around and specifically the LeapBook X360 1030 G3, which is a mouthful, is one of the top in the class. And today I'll tell you why. Stay tuned. All right, before we get into the specs of this specific device, I just wanna talk about the EliteBook series. So the Elite Books are the premium laptops that HP has been selling for a few years. And there's actually a few different classes of them. This is part of the 1000 series, which is definitely the high end versus the 800 series, which is more like a Dell Latitude 7000. And so the Elite Books all come in different sizes. And what I really like about them is that they're very much the same laptop across different sizes and features. So they all kind of look the same, they all feel the same, just depending on what size you want. This one here is a 13.3 inch, which if you follow laptops, the Ultrabook sizes, let's take a look here at the chassis and design. So overall, this is a really small laptop. It's 10% smaller than last year's 1030 model. and just looks really nice. It's a CNC aluminum chassis, single body, really nice, solid build, not a lot of flex either. I like coming around to the back here. You can see the new angular cut design that they're doing here, along with the Elite Book printed on the back. Nice and minimalist and just clean look to it as well. Turn to the left hand side, you can see the ports here, USB type A 3.1, headphone jack and the angular power button. Don't forget this does transform into a tablet, so you want the power button always accessible. You also have a little slot here, which is not accessible on this device, but that is if you get the option with a 4G LTE modem, which you can do as well. I kind of wish this one actually had it because I would use it all the time, but that's where that SIM card would go. To the right hand side, you do get a full HDMI port, which I still appreciate having. You also get a nano lock here for security reasons. And check this out, two Type-C ports, and those are both Thunderbolt 3, which is really nice. So you can use this for charging as well. In fact, if you charge this for 30 minutes, you're gonna get seven hours of battery life. That's what HP is claiming. That's because this has a really big battery in it and is really power efficient. You also have the volume rocker over here as well. And finally, you get a little tiny LED there to let you know it's charging, and it actually does kind of a breathing thing, which is kind of cool. Now, the top of the device, you do get that cool HP shiny logo, and it looks like a spec here, which at first I thought was something wrong with the chassis, but it's actually a little tiny microphone hole. That's because this is built for collaboration and working in office environment, so that microphone is used for noise canceling. It's pretty cool, so it faces out and listens to the outside world versus the inside part. Uh, really nice option to have, and you also get that nice antenna line there that's for your LTE modem and or Wi-Fi, they make sure you get a really good connection here. I've had no issues with it, but that's what that line is for. All right, turning to the display, 13.3 inch. This is a full HD model, it goes up to 400 nits. It's actually a little bit below that, but still not too bad. Now, there's another option here. Uh, HP actually gives you plenty of options for displays. This one is glossy. They do make an anti-glare version. They also have one with sure view. That's where you can hit the button and it masks the screen so onlookers can't see what you're reading or writing about, which is a nice option. That can also go up to 700 nits of brightness. And you can also get a 4K display. So if you're really into you know, having high resolution, with you know, you're going to take a hit on battery life, but if you want 4K, you can get that as well, which is pretty cool. Turn to the bezels now. So HP's done a lot of changes here, and you'll see this in their new Spectre line too as well. Uh, the bezels are now 50% smaller than last year's model. This is part of the reduction in footprint of the device. So the side bezels are extremely thin. They're not quite as thin on top and bottom, but this is one thing I do like what they're doing is that they're more balanced. So the ones on top here are kind of thin and they match the ones on the bottom. If you look at HP's old design, they used to have like a really large chin down here and a thinner bezel on top. Now it's a little bit more evenly matched. This bottom chin is also also reduced around 30%, so it's gonna be a nice reduction overall in size. But there are no trade-offs either for the camera. In fact, you still get a web camera on top and Windows Hello with infrared on top. And I should mention that web camera is now upgraded to a full HD model. So HP's been making a big deal about this, that obviously companies are using this for conference calls and you should have a really good web camera in there. So it went from 720 to 1080. Having said that, it's still an okay camera. I think this is still the best web camera is gonna be found on Surface devices, but it's nice to see an increase in resolution. Turn to the main deck here, you get HP's really good collaboration keyboard. So this has dedicated keys for hanging up and answering phone calls using Skype Business as well as Calendar and more. It's one of my favorite keyboards around. The Elite Book series always does good keyboards in my opinion. Just really nice force return on these curves. Uh, it just feels really nice to type on. It's very sharp and sprightly, uh, just really nice design. You also get a really good trackpad here. So if you've heard me ramble against the HP Spectre laptops, they use Synaptics drivers, while on the Elite Book line, they use Precision drivers. And this is a really good trackpad. It's glass, it's smooth, it just feels really nice. I like the size of it. This is just a really excellent trackpad. 
Now, besides that Windows Hello IR camera, you do get a dedicated fingerprint reader as well. You can use both, either or neither. That's a change from last year, also where the fingerprint reader used to be on the side, so they've moved them now to their top deck, which allows them to offer more security with a system on chip version there as well. So really nice fingerprint reader, no complaints there. Now, I really want to focus a bit on these speakers. So this is another cool change here. The speakers are now top firing on the deck here flanking the keyboard, really nice design. You'll see this design now, HP's using on a few of their laptops. It actually goes back to the 1950s based on the original HP building, so I was told, which is really kind of cool. But really nice pattern design here. These are really good speakers. So these are two speakers here, but there are two on the bottom as well for when used in Teba mode. So you get quad speakers. This is one of the best sounding 13 inch laptops I've used, at least for PCs. It's really good. Uh, it actually blows away anything by Lenovo, definitely blows away anything by Dell as well. You can actually feel it resonate in the chassis. And if you're really big on audio, well, this is going to be your laptop. I'm really impressed with how much focus they've actually put on sound. It is Bang & Olufsen still, but quad speakers and a 13 inch laptop and the amount of sound you can get out of this is just super awesome. So good job, HP. And seeing as this device turns into a tablet or different modes, well, you need a pen with it too. So HP sells this separately if you don't want it, but this is their brand new Type-C pen. So it has a little slot here and you can use it to recharge with a Type-C charger, which is kind of cool. So you don't have a dedicated battery in this. And that's pretty neat, except I do find that the battery dies on this pretty often. Uh, luckily it's easy to charge and charges quickly, but it's not necessarily as good as having a dedicated battery with it. But there's some cool things with it. It's a Wacom AES pen. It works very well with it. Feels nice to use. You do get a button on top as well. So this does pair with Bluetooth and you can assign that to different programs uh, and it feels really nice. It's very light and there's also now a strong magnet in it so it actually attaches to the side of the device and it's a really strong magnet like <laughs> that won't come off. So really clever design here but you probably won't lose this pen but if you do well it will tell you you've lost your pen because it actually knows when the pen is not present with the laptop anymore so kind of a neat feature to have. And one of the great things about HP Elite Books is the amount of security stuff you get with it. And even as a consumer, I find this stuff really fascinating. So, so you get HP Sure Run, HP Sure Recover, you get their biosecurity. You get a bunch of stuff here that's gonna be just really impressive for protecting the device. For instance, if your BIOS gets hacked, it can restore itself, which is really nice. You can also do things so the first time you turn on the device, even after a restart, it's gonna require a fingerprint even before it boots past the BIOS. So you can't get anyone hacking your BIOS in the lower level of the system forget about the OS. And that's really impressive, it's totally optional. You can also do things like, it won't allow you to put in a thumb drive, it won't read it automatically. You'll need to do a password authentication before you allow access to that thumb drive. Again, so people can't sneak on stuff onto your device. Really amazing amount of security here. Maybe someday I'll go deeper into it, but if you're really into security and protecting your device, I think HPs are still one of the best out there. Let's talk a little bit about power and performance now. No surprises here. This one is configured with a Core i7-8650U processor. You also get a Core i5. You do get vPro and all that good stuff. You can get up to 16 gigs of RAM, but it is configurable yourself, so you can pull off this bottom. There are some models that have the RAM soldered onto the board, but for the most part, you should be able to access the RAM on some other versions of this device. For storage, you can get various models, including 256, 512, one terabyte. Now, it ranges from SATA, which is a little bit cheaper, to PCI i.e. depending if you want more speed. For the battery, you're talking a 56 watt hour battery, which is actually a pretty good size. And they've done some really amazing work here with battery optimization. So HP is promising 18 hours, which you know is probably setting up alarms. No one gets 18 hours, but I'm getting actually well past 10 hours on this, which for a Core i7 with this power on this device, I'm actually pretty happy with that. It's actually very good. I feel like it lasts all day and I actually have to struggle to try to kill it. So very good battery life. HP has been doing some really good optimization here. In terms of the actual size of the device, it's 2.76 pounds. 1.24 kilograms, so it's very light. It's similar to a Surface laptop, but it transforms into a full tablet and you get that pen support built in as well. So this makes it a much more universal device. And that's kind of what I really like about the HP Leapbook X360 here, is I don't feel like I'm making any compromises. As someone who uses laptops a lot, this does everything I kind of want it to do. It turns into a tablet, has a really good pen, gets amazing battery life, nice keyboard, really good trackpad. The audio is some of the best I've heard on the market, and it's just a really good and reliable device. You also get a ton of security. One thing I don't really love about it, the deck is a little bit short for my palms and I feel like they hang off a little bit and that metal edge is a little sharp on my palms, but overall not a huge complaint, just something I've noticed and you know I had to pick out some small things here. But overall the build quality is really good. It's an A10G specified for military testing. So that means for drop tests and dust and all that kind of stuff, it's pretty resilient. 
it's an expensive laptop that was started around $1,800. It is a business class laptop, so it's gonna go up from there. But you can get things like 4G LTE in there, which is a really nice choice to have. Overall, if you're a consumer looking for a really good business laptop, I feel like the Elite Book here is one of your best choices you can get. And if you're a business, well, I think it's definitely worth checking out. It's a very versatile laptop. It feels great, it looks nice. Overall though, I gotta give HP a huge thumbs up here for this laptop. It's one of my favorites, and I'm not even a real business user, of course, but it just has so much cool stuff in it, it's hard to turn down. All right, so there's a quick look at the HP EliteBook X360 1030G3. If you like this video, leave me a comment below. And if you have any questions about this device, let me know as well. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone.